If you want to buy a house or an apartment, you very likely need a mortgage. And if you need to get a mortgage, you need to work with a bank. In today's video, I'll tell you about the specifics on how you prepare for that very first critical meeting with a bank. What are the conditions you should be looking out for? How you get access to the best mortgages, to the best services? What are the specifics on what can you can and then should negotiate with a bank? With that, before we start, a quick disclaimer. And that is that banks' business is to loan people money. If you can show yourself to be an enticing customer, banks will be fighting to loan you money. And always keep that in mind, you're not a powerless pawn in this case. If you show yourself to be an enticing customer, banks will be in line to give you money. The way I structure this video is that first, I'm gonna go in depth on how you can present yourself in Denmark as an enticing customer to banks, even though you're an expert and a foreigner. Second, I'm gonna go through the specific items you should be negotiating with a bank, from the mortgage conditions to fees and so on that you can waive and all that. And last, I'm gonna give you the specific recommendations on which banks you should focus on based on your own specific situation and condition. The way you sell yourself to banks is that you need to show them and you need to make it clear to them that you will pay them back in full, that you will never ever default, that you will give them all their money back to the last cent. If you make that clear, if that's absolutely certain to the banks that you will get them their money back, they will loan you whatever you want. They will give you the conditions that you want. They will want you as a customer. Everything you'll be doing in this bank meeting has to strengthen that impression that yes, you're the type of person who will pay them back in full. There are multiple ways you can approach this, but the two most effective ones are first, show a strong connection to Denmark, and second, is that you should show that you also have strong finances. When it comes to the connection to Denmark, what you need to be aware of is that banks have this fear coming especially from the 2008 crash that if you're an expat and all heist breaks loose and the prices for real estate crash, you might just give them the keys for the house, tell them you're not going to pay the mortgage, that you're going back to your country and bye bye bank. And if that happens, it would be really bad for them, right? So they're just afraid that that could happen. And again, when you're getting a loan for 30 years, you could say, okay, maybe not this year, not next year, but in you know, 10 years might also happen. Banks are a bit afraid of that. And because of that, the way you mitigate this fear is by showing that you're here in Denmark for the long term, that you're not planning to leave, that you're okay, going to settle here. And the way you approach this is by telling them a specific actions you have done to show this commitment. Have you gotten Danish permanent residency or a Danish citizenship? Tell them. Have you gotten a Danish wife or a Danish husband? Tell them. Did you get kids here in Denmark? That's also a commitment here. Do you have them in a kindergarten? Do you have them in a book store? Do you have them in school? They will appreciate that as well. They will know that you're a more you know, grounded person here in the country. Do you love your job here in Denmark? Okay, that's something that you're connected with. I was even joking with a friend saying that you should go with a Danish t-shirt, with a Danish football t-shirt to the bank meeting. Again, show with actions your strong commitment to Denmark. And if you do, banks will say, okay, this person is not so risky. This is not a normal expat. This is when it's someone who will be here to stay. The second thing is that you need to show strong finances. And specifically, banks will ask you for a multitude of information. They will ask you for at least your last three pay slips. They will ask you for your tax information for the last few years. They will ask you for your pension information. They will ask you for screenshots from your bank accounts if you're not customer in that specific bank. So we will want to know how much money you have in every single bank. Also, if you have money abroad, how much money do you have? And if you have a partner, they will also ask you for them as well. They will also ask whether you have a loan or not on top of the mortgage that you're looking into. So you have a loan for the car, you have a loan for whatever you might have a loan for. On top of that as well, you need to provide them a monthly budget. So you need to tell them how much money you're earning each month and how much money you are spending. And you need to ideally break it down. So how much money you spend on rent, how much money you spend on food, how much money you spend going out, traveling and so on. Once you have all this information, banks will make an assessment whether you're an enticing customer or not and how much they can loan you money for. Critical thing to note as well is that the way I approach this and the way I suggest people approach this is that you need to show banks first that you have savings, that you're, when they see your screenshots and when they see your tax slips and so on, that you're a type of person who saves money. So you have money in your pocket. And on top of that, you need to show that you have a strong monthly savings rate. So at least 10%, ideally more. So if you are a type of person who saves 20% of their salary each month, even when you're renting, even when you're traveling and so on, you will be again showing yourself to be in a strong position to then weather having a new mortgage and a higher cost of owning a flat the first few years. When the banks have all this information, banks will tell you whether you can get access to the F1 loan, F3 loan, F5 loan, F30 loan, repayments, no repayments, you name it. All the conditions will be based on mostly this information that I just told you about. Just one thing to keep in mind is that banks will assess you based on this information, but not all banks will assess you in the same way. So for example, in my case, Dunsk Bank was not going to give me the loan with repayment without repayments that I wanted. And Nordia, Jusk Bank were like, yeah, of course we'll give you this. So 
with basically the same information. It could also happen the same to you that one bank will not give you as much money for the mortgage as you want. Some might not waive you the free loan that you want and so on. So again, shop around, be talking with different banks because even if you give them the exact same information and coming across in the same way, different people will assess you in a different way based on their own experience and the people they have met so far in the past. So yeah, talk with a lot of different options and talk with a lot of different banks. And then when you get those opportunities, check and pre-select the ones that will give you the type of things that you want. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you click subscribe below. That's the way you'll get access to all future videos and videos will be about as I'm doing now, housing in Denmark, but also investing and all money related topics in Denmark and even all the things that you can do as an expert to live the best possible life in here. With that, love you to have you here. Thank you so much and let's continue. Second, so what are the specifics of what can you negotiate with the banks? What are the things you can discuss with them? And I want to highlight six of them. The first one is the elephant in the room and that is purchase price. In Denmark, you, I mean, you're allowed to get as a loan by law between four and five times your yearly salary, so pre-tax, and that's normally the rough, the rough ballpark that banks will loan you. But not all banks will loan you the same. So some banks will tell you, you know what, Mario, up to five million you can bid, and some banks will say Mario 4.5, and some banks will say Mario 5.5. There will be a range. Will not be. It's not exact science that all banks will loan you the same amount of money. Maximizing the purchase price and going as high as you can is your key KPI. Is your key metric. You need to talk with a lot of banks because again, not all will give you the same amount of money. Second is the types of loans you can get. So not all banks will give you the best loans or the cheapest loans. So they will all give you, if they approve you as a customer, the fixed for 30 years loan because that's a basically lowest risk option. You will have the same interest rate for 30 years. Even if the market goes crazy, you'll still have to pay the same amount of money. If they have seen your finances, they have the, the wheel room, they will be fine and they will be like, okay, we can give you this. But as you move closer in time, so if you get the F5, you get the F3, F1, and even the one that changes monthly, banks will be a lot more wary of giving you that unless you have strong finances and again, strong connection to Denmark and so on. If you want to get access to these loans, it's something that you then need to negotiate. It's not a given that banks will give you all these options. And on top of that, there's also the option. Will banks give you the loan with repayments only or they will also give you the option without repayments? And again, there's even some talks about making those rules a bit stricter as well based on how much your payment is and so on. So just keep that in mind that again, not all banks will give you the same. So when I was working myself with different banks at the beginning, Danske Bank was not going to give me the loan without repayments. And that's exactly what I wanted, right? So I told, okay, Danske Bank, no, I don't go with another bank. So again, we'll change from bank to bank. The more banks you talk, the more options you will have. But in the ideal world, you want access to the full gamut of options. And with that said as well, there's a video linked over here where I explain all these you know, different mortgage types in depth. Free down payment needed. So in Denmark, the minimum by law that you need to provide when you buy a house as a down payment is 5%. But banks might, depending on your conditions, ask you for more. And we have seen that a lot for expats. They will ask you for maybe 10%, they will ask you for 15%, and sometimes they might go as high as 40%. So again, depending on the situation, depending on the bank, depending on your finances and so on, they will ask you for more money. Depending on your condition, you might not be in a position to put 40%, to put 30%, even to put 20%. So again, this is this something that you can negotiate? It's not given that the banks will no, not be able to give you 6% or 70% as a down payment needed. Minimum five, that's by law, but anything on top of else of that is negotiable. Four is bank loan interest. So if you have not put 20% as a down payment, you need to get a loan from the six till 20% is called a bank loan. Again, the explanation of this, the complex side of this is in this video over here. But what you need to know, yes, is that if you put a 5% down payment, you need to have 15% from somewhere else that's not a mortgage. That's not a fixed 30 years loan and so on. And that is what it's called a bank loan. And this bank loan is more expensive than the mortgages. If the mortgages are between one and a half and 2% per year or whatever it is at the moment, bank's loan will usually be a few percentage points higher and they're more expensive to service. And this interest on this bank loan is negotiable. So if the bank tells you it's 5%, you can negotiate that to 4%. Maybe you can negotiate to 3.5%. Again, it's not that it's super easy to negotiate this, but if you shop around different banks, it's almost certain that they will have different options. And then you can start pushing that down. That's what I did in my case. I had to get a bank loan for around 5%. And I checked with Yuske Bank, I checked with Nordia, I checked with Danske Bank, even though I was not gonna work with Danske Bank anymore. How much do you give me for the bank loan? What is the interest? And then once I found which was, was the lowest, I just pushed all the banks to give me the same. And they were even asking me, like they did not believe me that one bank was giving me something so low. And so I showed them the screenshot. And once they showed the screenshot of the, the bank offer, they were like, okay, we can also match that and so on. So they will call your bluff if you're just 
you know BSing, but like if you do show commitment and you have shown that you have negotiated things, they will give you a good deal. And this can also mean substantial amount of money if you are only putting 5% as a payment. Five are the bank fees. So what you need to be aware of is that there are certain things when it comes to loan registrations and mortgages and so on that are taxes. And what is a tax you basically can't negotiate. It's something you need to pay to the state and the state will not tell you, hey, you know, you, you pay less. Now basically like, you need to pay them in full. But a lot of the things that are bank fees specifically, they can negotiate and they can waive those off. So for example, where the bank loan, there are certain fees that you need to pay to the state when you register a loan that you can't go away from. But there are certain fees that are paid straight to the mortgage institution or to the bank. And those those fees, which I mean, it's not that they amount to a lot of money, but they amount to a few thousand. You can tell the bank, if you want me as a customer, I'm ready to go through this, but I'm not going to pay this 2,000 or 3,000 fee here and there. And they can weigh that off. I mean, they're in the position, they have the power to do that. And if you want to save some money, that's something you can do as well. Sixth and last is to get a bank premium status. And the status is not that you just have a fancy logo on your bank card or whatever. Specifically, you want banks to waive off all fees for national and international transfers. And it's not that they cost a lot of money. It's like one corner here, two corner there, three corner there, but you just don't want that. And you don't want to pay them fees for something you don't need to. So just tell them, hey, wave me all the fees. And I remember even fighting with the bank for just a fee of one krona per transfer, which was like, it's trivial, right? But it just sends a signal that, hey, I'm a premium person. I'm not going to be paying one krona fee for sending something to my wife in the same bank. Does that make sense? Fight for that. Then also get this for example, the gold credit cards. Not that you need a credit card, but like if you get a gold credit card, for example, the MasterCard Gold that I got from my bank, this gives me free travel insurance. And instead of paying something that would used to cost our family like well, more than a thousand kron a year on travel insurance because we used to travel so much, now we just have it covered with our credit card and that basically saves us a lot of money every year. We have saved now thousands of miles, thousands of krona just because we had this option versus having to buy stuff in the past. So again, those are the perks you can have when you have a bank premium status. You can also have premium status in the sense that you can waive some of the new fees that banks put. That, for example, you need to pay certain money to have an account and so on. These are all things you can negotiate. Even now, I guess, I have not tried this, right? But the banks that have a, lo like a limit that if you have more than X amount, you need to pay them more than 100,000, you need to pay them interest and so on. Probably something you can negotiate as well. It's not a law. If it's not a law, if it's not a tax, you can negotiate. So as I said at the beginning, I wanted to give you a recommendation on which bank to go to and that is, anticlimatically, that you should go to the one that gives you the best deal. And just keep in mind that, as I said, this is something, these are things you can negotiate. And the way you negotiate is by, as I mentioned in my video that will be linked over here as well, is that you negotiate by having the most options. And then in practice, what it means is that you need to talk with as many banks as you can. So if you only talk with one bank or two banks or even three banks, you have done this wrong. You need to talk with a lot of banks. Ideally, talk with all of them. Unless, you know, one bank already gives you everything you want. And then, okay, yeah, sure. But like, if they're not giving you the F1 loan that you want, or they're not giving you the no repayment options, or they're not giving you the gold card, or they're not waiving the fee that you want, talk with more banks. And even then, like, it could be that one advisor in one bank is like not giving you what you want. They're not giving you everything exactly the way you want it. And you talk with another advisor in the same bank and they will. So again, consider your options. When you're about to make the biggest purchase of your life, when you're about to spend literally millions of krona, it makes sense to take that extra effort and talk with more people. They might reject you and so on, but like, again, you're spending so much money. Make sure you consider your options as much as you can. Last. As I said, this will be the biggest purchase of your life. Very likely the biggest purchase of your life. So you want to make sure you get the best deal that you can. You want to make sure you get that killer deal and you don't leave money on the table because again, that will count to hundreds of thousands of krona perhaps in the future. When it comes to negotiation, when it comes to making the best deal that you can from banks, I made a video over here where I explained the nine key practices when it comes to negotiation. In my job in Merck, I have negotiated myself over $850 million worth of deals. And I packaged a lot of my insights and best advice and best practical experience samples and so on into that video so make sure you check that out and with that thank you for watching all the way till the end all the best and good luck with your house purchase